Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Oxford Online Maths Club. Um, my name's James and I just clicked one of the wrong buttons. Hopefully you can now see and hear me coming to you live on YouTube with the Oxford Online Maths Club. Welcome back, welcome to season four. Um, it's been a couple of weeks off, it's felt like forever. I hope everyone had a good break over Easter. Um, you're ready for another season of Maths Club episodes. If it's your first time joining us, then hi, welcome to the club. Um, you don't need to sign up or register or do anything special. Um, we're live uh, each Thursday this term for the next uh, 12 weeks plus this one. Um, and we're going to do a bit of maths on the live stream uh, and hopefully you can get involved uh, in whatever way you like. Um, if you want to join in live with chat, uh, we are over on a website called Vivox. Um, here are some people, someone says hello, <laughs> so it's good, it shows me that someone's here. Um, we're using Vivox this term, uh, RIP Slido if you were here last term, and in fact season one and two we used Slido as well. Um, this term we're using Vivox, uh, which has some slightly different features. Um, the first difference you might notice if you're used to Slido is that everyone's anonymous. Um, but uh, it has some other features that I'm looking forward to. The polls are a little bit better. I can put maths into polls, which I've wanted to do a few times. Um, and it supports some other stuff too that I'm looking forward to. Um, yeah, so RIP Slido, but hello to Vivox. There's a link at the bottom of the screen and in the YouTube description. Um, I hope we can make it work. We're going to need to maybe sign off <laughs> sign off as i say that we're going to need to sign off our comments with names i think as i said that someone says it's a me mario so we're off and away hi to chat um it has latex unfortunately not latex for comments ah here people have found the vbox um it it has latex for me <laughs> in polls but not in chat sorry we're still we're still one step away from the maths utopia where we can do live chat with latex built in hi x plus i y hello to the now army of anonymous people. We're gonna work it out. Uh, people are, are joining, which is brilliant, even before I've put the link on the screen. I suppose it's already on the screen. Um, yes, hi, good. You'll notice as well, by the way, that uh, <laughs> official messages uh, are gonna be on the left in pink from me or from Flora, who's also here in chat today. Um, Flora's the third year student, you know Flora. <laughs> yeah, we're trying it out, right? Uh, trying out the maths. Uh, which is nice. Um, in the old days of Slido, I had to log in myself and it all looked a bit sus. Um, hi to Molly as well. Ah, good, right, cool. Um, yeah, that'll do, Ali. There we go. We've worked it out. Okay, good. Uh, coming up this season, um, we're going to look at some classic problems. Uh, my plan for this season, uh, lots of the students who have been on Maths Club recently uh, have got exams later this term. So I'm spending a lot of time revising, so it didn't feel fair to make them uh, make presentations as much. I've got fewer, fewer students this term, more classic problems that we're going to be uh, working on together. Um, classic problems including, for example, uh, problems to do with dominoes uh, coming up today. Um, the thing about classic problems is that uh, lots of the people watching this might have seen the problem before. Um, that's fine, of course. That's how they became classic problems, I suppose. People have seen them before. Um, some people haven't seen them before, and that's brilliant. Uh, this could be, uh, it could be you, you might not have seen this problem before. Uh, that's that's good, I think. There are no replies, sad face. Yeah, I think that's true. We're gonna have to at people as well. Somebody bought a copy of Pasta Des by Design, my word. This was the book, uh, a few weeks ago, We uh, I showed a copy of a book that I've got uh, about, uh, it's a bit silly, about equations for pasta shapes. Somebody in chat says they bought a copy of it on the live stream. The only copy we could find was about 60 quid second hand, which didn't seem like a good deal at the time. So I hope you didn't pick that copy up. Anyway, um, don't tell me. Uh, Flora's giving some advice about signing things off. Yeah, it doesn't have direct replies. It's a bit more like a conventional chat. Right, cool. Uh, Vbox, we're going to make it work. Uh, okay, what am I saying? I'm saying math stuff. Yeah, uh, classic problems. Even if you've seen the classic problem before, it's going to be all right. We're going to try and do some variants of classic problems as well. So that if you've seen the classic problem, hopefully I can come up with a variant that you haven't seen before. Um, things are not hidden in replies. Oh, look, I'm just reading out a chat now, which is nice. It's Flora and Molly having a chat and I can just, I can just sit back and read out their conversation. That'd be nice. There we go. Right, good. Okie dokie. Uh, here we go. Right, uh, live chat link, uh, vvox.app slash. 
one two four eight three five eight two eight. I'm gonna work out if I can make that shorter or more catchy. At the moment, it is vivox dot app slash and then a nine digit event code, which you can also type in if you go to vivox dot com uh, or vivox app. Uh, one two four eight three five eight two eight. Um, and when it gave me a nine digit number, my first question was, of course, is this prime? Uh, and unfortunately, it's it's not a prime number. Uh, it's a multiple of six two two. Anyway, um, right, good, okay, uh, right. So let's do a classic problem. I think I've waffled enough at the start for people to join in. Um, Rory's got a suggestion. Yes, we tried this rule a few weeks ago about not putting solutions. Um, something Vivox does that Slido didn't quite do in the same way is. Um, we're doing chat moderation. Uh, Vivox preserves the order, the sequence. So if you put a solution, if you type a solution into Vivox, then Flora might moderate it, might hold it back. Um, but when it eventually gets approved, it will pop in into the timeline in the right place. So we'll, we'll know <laughs> we'll know who was first or something like that. Right? Yeah. The Vivox, the Vivox link is not as snappy as the Slido link. Um, get, so you can post solutions if you like, if you thought of the solution, um, and we might hold them back and then they'll appear later. Uh, it's also acceptable to post, I've thought of the solution, or I've seen this before if you want to. Um, something I'll ask is please try not to answer or anticipate the next question. Um, when we've done something like this before, people have tried to guess the next problem and answer that one, and then it gets really confusing for us because we start getting answers before questions and it all gets a bit... Oh, non-linear in time sense. Right, anyway, I'm going to show you the problem. And the thing is, as soon as I show you the problem, some people already know the answer before I've even said the question. Right, well, here we go. We'll, we'll go for it. Um, problem works like this. Um, you've got an 8x8 eight eight, uh, grid of squares. There are 64 squares there. Um, and you've got a big supply of 2 by one dominoes. The dominoes look like this. Uh, they are rectangles that are two by one, um, and we're going to try and cover all of the the grids with these two by one uh, dominoes, uh, covering it, covering it so that the tiles don't overlap, uh, and so that the, the the dominoes are supposed to line up with the squares and cover you know exactly two squares each. Um, are Matt questions in the wrong spirit? You can put Matt questions in if you like. If you put admissions questions or Matt questions in there, I might not answer them live. It's part of my job to answer Matt questions though, so I will at some point come back and try to answer things later. Um, and there is also a Matt, 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 a Matt live stream starting later in the year. Thank you, Flora. Cool. This is a very classic problem. In fact, it's so classic I haven't even said the problem yet. Uh, covering this 8x8 grid with these dominoes is not hard at all. Um, in fact, it's almost hard not to do it. I'm not really supposed to describe things as easy because Describing things as easy just makes people feel bad if they can't do it, and also feel bad if they can do it. So nothing gained. But covering this by two by two by one rectangles is is straightforward. So the, the actual problem is, what are you going to do if I remove two opposite squares? Um, so the challenge is still the same. Can you cover this using thirty one of these two by one dominoes to cover up the whole board? Uh, or is it impossible? Um, so those are the two options. Either it's possible, you can cover all of those 62 squares using these 31 dominoes, or maybe it's impossible. Um, and that's the, that's the classic problem. Um, I can't even tell you the name of the problem, because in my opinion, the name of the problem has spoilers for the answer to the problem. Um, if you haven't seen this, I've got a hint, oh, okay. I don't know how I feel about hints. Let's do hints, fine. Um, if you haven't seen this before, then hooray, you're going to like this, I think. Um, it's worth having a go. Um, by which I mean uh, getting some square paper or even a blank bit of paper, drawing a rough picture of an 8x8 grid. We're going to do several things today on an 8x8 grid, so having one to, having one to hand might be, might be useful. Um, you could draw a rough one, don't get a ruler out. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be precise, I suppose. Um, and try uh, lay, laying, mm, try plonking down some two by one rectangles to see what happens. Um, 
so um, maybe I should say why as well while well, we're waiting for people to have a go at this oh, you could open a spreadsheet and do it that way ah yeah you don't even have to resize the squares to be squares because it, you know you could yeah you could just open Excel and start colouring things in whoa um, so on my screen I might do something like this um, if you've already seen this problem before, it's still worth having a go, I think, just to see how it goes wrong and to get a feel for this problem um, again, if you've seen it before. Um, we're going to do some other versions of this problem in a minute, and it's a good idea to get warmed up and used to what it's like trying to cover this uh, 62 squares using 31 of these. Um, okay, so maybe I'll put a couple in like that. That's my first one. Maybe I should be doing these a little bit more like, a bit more obviously linked together rather than just colouring in. Obviously I can colour in 62 squares, but can I, can I do it with dominoes like this? A black one and then a red one. Maybe I could put a, an orange one somewhere. Okay, I think I'm pretty bad attempt to start off with here. Um, I think as you start playing around with this, you notice that, well, seven is odd. So there's something going on over here. Um, seven is odd, so probably that means that uh, the top row is, is not all straight across. One of them's going to be down like this. Um, and then you can go and say other stuff about what's going on um, in the rows below. There's an argument that works a bit like that, I think. Uh, but this is not the classic solution to this problem. Um, yeah, uh, not the classic solution to this problem. Uh, the classic solution is a bit different. Um, Ali's put a hint in chat, which is to consider parity, which I think is one of those hints, it's quite a good hint if you know what parity means. If you don't know what parity means, then it's almost not a hint at all. Um, so, um, uh, maybe that's maybe that's useful to some people, we'll see. Oh, Dedekind's got a solution, uh, kind. can we start with a four by four grid first? Maybe that's a good idea, to, so sometimes doing smaller versions of the problem is good to get intuition about how the full problem works. I don't know if we start with a smaller grid. Let's see if I can draw a 4x4 four four grid. Having just encouraged everyone at home to try this, try drawing one, let's see if I can do one. There we go, okay. Um, so a 4x4 four four grid with corners removed would look like this. Um, and then, okay, so the top row would need um, some sideways ones and some up and down ones. Ah, Flora's given a definition of parity in chat. Parity is to do with being even and odd. A bit like how 7 is an odd number. Um, so on this smaller grid, I suppose I'll be trying to use seven uh, dominoes to cover that up. Uh, and trying out combinations maybe in the top row of what I can do. I think it turns out that this is impossible. There's nothing that works. Um, so... Uh, so good suggestion. Trying a small, trying a small thing. Um, I think you have to go through and check what happens if you have a sideways one and a right way up one, a sideways one and a vertical one there, and then also the other way around, or maybe three vertical ones, and check the different cases for what that means. For example, if you have three vertical dominoes at the top here, then this one's also vertical, and then this one's vertical, and then this one's vertical. Oh no, and I'm, I'm in trouble. Ha! And he's now given a, a, another hint, um, which I think people, everyone who's seen the problem before. Um, is expecting this to come up at some point. Um, there's a classic solution to this problem that doesn't work by counting along and thinking about the cases for the top row at all. Um, there's a classic solution which works by thinking about something different. Let's see what we've got in here. Um, let's see if we now approve things that are getting closer to solutions. Somebody over there. Yep. Yep. Cool. Good. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump to a solution, I think. Um, so we'll approve stuff that was in chat that looked like solutions as well. Um, it turns out it is impossible to cover this um, massive 8x8 uh, eight eight grid with the corners removed using 31 copies of the dominoes. And the solution is gorgeous. The solution is really good. Um, I've slightly misled you by talking about the different cases for the top row. Um, there is a proof that works like that, I think. Um, go through all the cases. You might expect that to prove to be extremely long and complicated. I think you'd be right um, for checking all the, the possibilities. But there's a really nice proof. It's a really good idea, which is to colour in the 8x8 grid uh, like a chessboard. 
um, maybe like this. Uh, in fact, this problem is usually referred to as the mutilated chessboard problem. Mutilated, like it had the corners chopped off. And chessboard, like an 8x8 grid um, with the, 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 the squares coloured in so that no two uh, adjacent squares are the same colour, using two colours. I said that in such a terrible way. Um, yeah, so the 4x4 case was pretty good. And then maybe something to do with induction. In fact, so this, is, this is a good idea, Rory. Um, uh, this is a good idea. In fact, there's a gorgeous thing going on where we can colour in all of the squares like this uh, in this chessboard pattern. And in case you haven't seen it yet, um, here's what's good about this. Every domino covers one white square and one blue square. Isn't that great? Um, so this is really nice. Um, wherever you put a domino, it covers exactly one white square and exactly one blue square. But if you count them, <laughs> there are 32 blue squares and only 30 white squares. in this picture. So you can't possibly cover it with 31 dominoes because 31 dominoes would always cover 31 white squares and 31 blue squares. Wherever you put down these dominoes, they cover one of each. Uh, so your pattern of dominoes always covers um, an equal number of white squares and blue squares uh, no matter where you put down the dominoes. Um, yeah, the problem is that the corners you've taken away are both white squares. Um, someone says that is genius, which gives me hope that somebody in chat possibly hasn't seen, didn't see, hasn't seen this problem before. I think it's beautiful. It's really nice. Um, I have to admit, I'm not sure I would have thought of this. Um, and a challenge for you for the rest of this live stream, if you've seen this before, and you were sitting at home happily thinking, ah yes, it's going to be a chessboard, and we colour it in like a chessboard. Um, the challenge for you is, did you think of that yourself? Maybe you did, in which case, uh, big hand clap, this is a gorgeous thing to think of, well done. Um, when I first saw this problem, it was presented to me as a chessboard problem, and it was with a, with a chessboard, and if you're actually given a chessboard from the start, then something you notice when you try to tile it with dominoes, is that your two leftover squares are the same colour. Um, they're, they're both blue, um, whatever you do. Uh, you might have a really good attempt and then be left with two squares that are both blue. Um, uh, maybe these two, uh, after doing a lot of tiling. Um, and if you tried it a few times, you spot that there's always two blue squares you get left over and that gives you the idea maybe um, that, hey, whatever I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be left with two blue squares. Um, people have never seen it before, hooray. At least one person in chat has never seen this before. Um, it's such a nice idea. I think it's always possible to, if you've seen this problem a couple of times, if you come across it a couple of times, it's possible to forget what a nice idea this is, how horrible it would be to try and do something by induction or by thinking about the first row uh, and putting things, to, putting things together like that. It's just so much faster and more elegant. Okay, um, so the problem was we removed two white squares and every domino covers a blue square and a white square. Um, I think I found these in those, uh, oh, hello, uh, Murderous Maths books. Ah, yeah, I had the Murderous Maths books. Um, the solution was unforgettable, says Ali. Okay, right. We're going to do some variants of this problem now. So hopefully I'm going to show, <laughs> hopefully everyone's going to see a version of this problem they haven't seen before at some point. Hopefully digging down into uh, into what uh, uh, problems that you haven't done. Dedek has just done, asked one of the questions that I would like to ask as well, um, which we'll get to. Uh, I have some other stupid questions. Uh, so, uh, a good way to under check if you've understood a solution or understood a, a puzzle like this is to think about variants of it. Um, let's think about other variants. Uh, first thing I thought of, um, this is unfiltered, so this is like things I've thought of whether they're good or not, is to look at an n by n board instead. Okay. Um, so n by n board instead of eight by eight, you know, eight is special because that's how big chess boards are. Um, what if we do an M by M board instead? Uh, and because we're using new software today, I'm gonna try out 
a poll. Uh, I also read it in the Murderous Maths books, but forgot about it. So I don't know about unforgettable. Okay, cool. I read about it in Murderous Maths books, but forgot that I'd read it about it in Murderous Maths books. That was a tongue twister. Um, okay, poll. Partly I'm trying to find out where the polls work. Ooh, that's not quite on the screen, is it? Um, okay, let's see how this works. Um, so, n by n board. Um, so, n squares along the top, n squares down the side. Remove the opposite corners. Remove, sorry, remove two opposite corners. Um, can you tile that using two by one dominoes? Uh, and I've got three options, a little bit maybe mischievously on the screen. Um, one is yes if n is even, but not eight, or if n is odd. So maybe eight is special. Uh, one of my options is yes if n is odd. Uh, one of my options is no, never. If I press, so it's not currently showing results. If I press show results, okay, we can also watch along as we're voting. Oh, and it's put that in the feature pink colour. Ha! Ah, learning about VFOX, isn't that nice? Is it cropped it on screen? Ah, let's have a look, quick look at the screen. Ooh, doo -doo, look at the live stream. Ah, the colours are a bit rubbish on the, on the live stream. Hmm. Interesting. That's not quite working, is it? Cool, right, good. Something to fix for next time. Ha 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 ha. Okay, people are voting. At the moment, uh, I think people have noticed that if n is odd, ha, this is maybe my trap. Um, so if n is odd, then the squares, maybe they turn out to be the same color. In fact, I'm not even sure that's, maybe they turn out to be different colors. I'm not even sure that's true, actually. If it's a seven by seven board, I can't remember why I put this option in. Um, if it's a seven by seven board, then you remove two opposite corners. Um, but that doesn't seem to help very much. Um, and moreover, if uh, n is, if n is, uh, had a quick having a quick look at chat. If n is uh, odd, then the total number of squares is odd. And if you remove two opposite corners, then the number of squares is, is also odd. Right. Okay. So the the square, the diagonal, it's always the same color, no matter what n is. I've really ruined the colours on this chat, haven't I? Something did something change, or is something always bad? It's just always bad, isn't it? Okay, I might fiddle with that in a second. Um, cool. Quick look at the poll. Yeah, so voting is going in the direction of um, no, this is never possible, which I think is also true. Okay, cool. Um, close that. Back to there. Okay, learning how to use things. In a moment, I'm going to set you a question to think about, and I'm going to try and fix the way that chat's displaying on screen. <laughs> I've just noticed that it's all blurry and weird and that's annoying me. Right, don't fix that live. Okay, um, so whatever n is, it's impossible. I think if n is odd, there's two reasons it doesn't work. Well, not really, but uh, you can still do the same argument about removing opposite corners, uh, being the same colour, uh, but moreover, the number of squares is, is odd. And if n is even, then, aha, you uh, you run an argument like this. Colour it in like a chessboard, remove the opposite corners. Okay, cool, nothing special going on there. Um, n's got to be great, one, thanks. Um, if n is equal to 1, then you remove... Hang on. <laughs> if n is equal to 1, then you've got one square on your chessboard. You remove the opposite corners and you've now got no squares. Maybe that is possible to tile using 0 2 by, two by 1 dominoes. So maybe n by 1, maybe n equals 1 is possible. n equals 2? Oh, no, n equals 2 is pretty bad because you remove the opposite corners and then you've just got these two squares left. You have one one domino to cover two diagonally collected squares, which doesn't work. Okay. Right, cool. One debatable, two. I'm going to say no, and then three onwards. No. What about n times m rectangles? That's a really nice idea. Um, so yeah, let's do let's do that. I oh, forget what I was going to talk about. Uh, that's lovely. So n by m rectangles. Did I miss anything else in chat? Being like five at the time when you oh when you read it yeah 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 okay okay uh, was thing, but okay I don't think I've missed anything else chat let's talk about this this seems good okay so n by m rectangle but then remove the corners so maybe this is n uh, for oh, goodness me ha <laughs> ha maybe this is n for how long it is this way and maybe this is m for how wide it is this way and we're going to cut off the corners. So, what do we think? Uh, I'm not sure if this is an IMO question. I, mean, I don't know all of the past IMO questions, um, but what can we say about this? 
Depends what N and N and M are. That's true. Um, if N and M are both, if they're the same, then it's the squares that we were just thinking about. Um, and it's impossible. It's always impossible for, for squares because you've removed uh, those diagonals of the same color. Um, if N and M are not the same, then the squares you've removed, I suppose, might be the same color or they might not. Now, uh, what do I want? It's not immediately obvious whether I want to remove two squares the same or not. There's going to be some counting. Let's think about small rectangles. Maybe this is an IMO question. If it's an IMO question, then my chances of solving it in this live stream. Uh, look, I can't even draw a two by three rectangle very well. Here's a two by three rectangle. Thanks, chat. Um, if you cut off the cut off the opposite corners, then ah, chat says we can cover that with dominoes. <laughs> so here we go. I can see how to do it as well. There's a domino down here and a domino up top. Looks good. Thanks, chat. Um, and that's a case where that's a case where if it was chessboard colours. We've removed one square of each colour and ended up with ended up with equal numbers of squares of each colour. Um, the fact about dominoes covering one square of each colour is still true. Um, so anything we're trying to cover with dominoes should probably have the same number of blue squares and white squares. Right, if n times n is odd, so if n and m are both odd, then it's impossible, says uh, someone in chat. Let's try and work that out. Um, uh, somebody's giving spo someone's put spoilers in. Flora's holding some spoilers back. Okay, is it an answer to the M, M by M, uh, M by M thing? If it is, I'm gonna. Oh, I can have a look. Uh, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. Someone's right. <laughs> someone's telling me about odd, and, odd and even numbers a bit more. If they're both odd, then this feels like uh, so three by three. Let's try three by three. And you know, we already already did three by three. That was squares. Um, maybe I should think about three by four. So what's the claim here? Three by four. I'm very careful not to make that four by four again. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm nervous about thinking about configurations where the... Um, I'm nervous about going too fast. Because maybe I'm being thick, but it's not obvious to me that these have the same number of blue squares and white squares before we do any, before we do any mutilation chopping corners off. Oh, hang on a minute. As I colour it in, I've realised that, yes, this grid is going to have the same number of blue squares and white squares before any mutilation happens, uh, because four is even. So, if, okay, if one of the sides, if at least one of the sides is even, then the number of blue and white squares is equal, they're equal before the corners are cut off. So you must cut corners that are the same colour as each other, in this case where one of them is even. Okay, um, and actually my opposite corners in this case are different colours because uh, four plus three is odd. <laughs> so this is going around the outside. Four plus three is odd, so the opposite corners are different colors. So that looks all right. Okay, and in fact, in fact, chat says this is possible. Uh, I can sort of see how as well. <laughs> okay, so this is going along nicely. Um, but there was something in that, wasn't there, that if they're both even, if both N and M are even, then I think this is going to be impossible. So there's going to be a slight generalization of the N by N squares. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> there seem to be several cases coming out. Um, even by even, or by odd, or by even. Um, and I think... I think we're getting close to saying even by even. This is the danger of getting distracted by questions in chat. Um, even by even, I think, is impossible because there's the same number of same number of uh, blue and white squares to start off with. The opposite corners are the same colour, and then you remove them and you get uh, more of the colour you didn't remove than the colour you did. So I think even by even is impossible. I'm going to put a question mark there because I'm thinking out loud while on a live stream. So if I'm wrong, there's a thing in the YouTube description to point out the error. Thanks, future James. Um, if it's odd by odd, yeah, okay, okay, even by even, impossible. And okay, Whew, this is tough. Um, 
odd by odd, I think is impossible for a different reason. So odd by odd is impossible because the number of squares is odd. If you remove two corners, you've still got an odd number of squares. And the dominoes each have two squares, so they make an even number. I can do this live. I can do this live. So for example, that three by five case has 15 squares. You took a draw after you've got 13. You can't cover that with dominoes. Um, so even by odd, I'm going to say maybe possible. We've found a couple of examples where it is possible, but I don't think we're yet ready to say this is always possible. Okay, how are we doing? What's chat say? Uh, chat says if m plus n is odd is possible, that's this, that's this case. I'm not yet convinced about it being possible. We've done a couple of small cases, 3 by 2 and 3 by 4. So they checked, they worked out. Um, not convinced yet that it's always possible. Um, Ah yes, here's a suggestion in chat. I feel like all, I feel like all rectangles with the same number of blue and white squares should be possible. Uh, not sure if it's true though. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody was talking about odd by odd, also impossible. Thank you, chat. Uh, yep, good, yeah, good, good, good. Okay. Um, there's a version of this problem as well. Ooh, two by odd n, and then do some sort of induction. Induction's really tricky for this problem. I had a go <laughs> for thinking about induction for the eight by eight problem. The plan was going to be, I'll show you some induction, and it's horrible. And then we think about chessboards, and it's amazing. I might have delayed the punchline a little bit too much. Um, induction is tricky because the the problems the problem with two by n is quite different from the problem with four by n. You can have lots of com complicated ways that the dominoes overlap and don't behave nicely, like a two by n and then another two by n. If that if that means anything, that the the relationship between big boards and smaller boards is quite complicated. Um, in how you use those. Um, good, okay. I'm gonna come back to that admissions question. The short answer is no, it's fine. Uh, the long answer is gonna appear in a chat message at some point later. Okay, um, so even though by may be possible, is at least, I think, got the same number of blue squares and white squares. Okay, let's get rid of this. Uh, another version of this problem that I was going to talk about, I think, Let's uh, do that. Um, is something like putting, uh, removing, removing two squares that are the same color at random, or just choosing two squares that there's, that are sorry different colors, like maybe this one and this one, um, and saying, look, now there's the same color of same number of squares of each color. Um, can I can I tie all that? Um, it feels like chat is approaching a different thing uh, about ha uh, oh inter intermediate maths olympiad not the international maths olympiad ha other stuff going on oh uh, what do I like uh, suggestion for geometric induction we did something with uh, induction and dominoes on the live stream before uh, so I'll put a link back to it um, that's a good example of some induction for a geometric tiling problem that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, yeah, not obvious. The problem I was going to talk about in the live stream, this was spoiled for me earlier today because I'd been thinking about it a bit and then I accidentally read the solution on Wikipedia. Um, problem with classic problems is the solutions are out there and if you look for them even slightly then you'll bump into them. Um, tiling where there's uh, so tiling this grid with that white square and that blue square removed, or just a different white square and a blue square removed, um, it feels like it should be possible. I agree with the person in chat who said it felt feels like it should be possible if there's the same number of white squares and blue squares. Um, but we shouldn't be so hasty. We should try and try and prove that in all of the different cases. Um, I think that's a good problem. Uh, I think it's a problem that you can think about without, you know, without needing to learn lots more mathematics in A level or IB or something. Um, there is a solution on Wikipedia if you're looking at Wikipedia stuff, which you should try and avoid seeing um, because I've had quite a lot of fun thinking about this problem, and you might too. Okay, this was proved. Um, this was proved in uh, I think 1973, um, one way or the other. So we're not that far away from the present day, right? Um, what about? Uh, more bigger dominoes. Good idea. 
Mathematicians colon, reach roadblock, yeah, that's me. Didn't feel like doing n by n, probably. The problem is, if it's possible, then proving it's possible means laying out lots of dominoes or explaining how to lay out lots of dominoes or at least coming up with some sort of clever plan of explaining how it's possible. Um, I think I know a solution for that uh, to prove it's possible, but only because I've seen it on Wikipedia. Spoilers, this is possible. Um, your intuition is right that removing uh, two squares from a rectangle like this, uh, if they're different colours, then we're good. Okay, but you should try and prove it. Uh, yeah. Uh, what are we looking at in chat? Um, ah, that's the thing on the... I didn't read the whole comment for the thing on the Intermediate Olympia. Something about cats and mouse mice. I'm going to have to look that up. And it involved parity. Uh, ooh. Look at the three wide column. Yeah. The people have got the same ideas as me. People want to look at... If you look at just this bit, sort of maybe focus your attention onto just this bit to try and take the problem area where there's some holes in the chessboard. Tie all the left bit, tie the right bit, and then just reduce down to looking at... Uh, maybe even just looking at the bit here. Um, the problem is that... Well, there's a bit, that would be all right, wouldn't it, for this one, where I've picked up these two. Oh, thanks, chat. Yeah, okay, okay. So, is this solution to remove... Tile it separately around the outsides of the problem bit, and then tile inside the problem bit. And this feels like the rectangle problem as well, the n by n rectangles for, for doing the problem bit inside. Okay. Um, so, I suppose that's uh, fine and less... We're doing... maybe that works. Uh, maybe that doesn't work if... Well, it's hard to see how it works. If I move these removed squares up by one, then this... oh hello. Oh right, okay. I'm going to... intermediate math question is in chat, thanks. Um, if I move these removed squares up by one, then I can still t tile the problem region in the middle. Less clear how I'm going to deal with the bit above the problem region and the bit below the problem region. Um, so this kind of surgery, I've split it, split it down into sub problems. I like that approach in general. Um, but there's a uh, issues in general. It's in, proving things are possible is is somehow worse than proving they're impossible. To prove they're impossible, you just need one good idea about why it can't happen. To prove it's possible that means it sort of involves doing it in some sense. And in a problem like this, a big general problem, yeah, I thought, do it in lots of cases. Um, good, right, okay. I'm going to try not to spoil this problem anymore. I'm going to show you something different. Uh, quick vote. So, somebody said parity earlier. Uh, I've got two directions I can go. Um, let's do a vote again, because that's fun. Uh, yeah, what's next? That's what I want. How do I get rid of the... <laughs> Vivox, because I haven't used Vivox before. Vivox has opened a sort of tutorial box on top of the button that I want to... This one. How do I launch that? Okay, I'm going to move it. Okay, okay. Oh, my word. This is the worst. Ha, gotcha. Okay. Um, options for what we're doing next. <laughs> Am I enjoying the switch to Vbox? Um, more examples of parity or another tiling problem? Up to you. Uh, vote now. So parity was that thing about odd or even things. It's a bit like how the chessboard's coloured. Uh, black and white, or blue and white, um, and it's something to do with that. Uh, I'm going to also fiddle with some settings because I said I would. Uh, like that seems about right. Okay, good. Uh, maybe that's good. Okay, uh, and I've forgotten to turn on results. Ah, more examples of parity is currently winning. If you're not interested in more examples of parity, vote now. Um, to overcome a 85% split, otherwise I'm going to talk about more examples of parity. Uh, parity is odd or even things. Um, I've got some more examples of that. Uh, I think someone just voted for parity, so, you know, that's becoming a bit of a dog pile. We'll see. Uh, yeah, they're just being, like, half bold. Yeah, I think I've tried to fix it. We'll have a, have a look. Cool, right, parity's one. Better or worse? Maybe don't do this live. <laughs> Not great, eh? Not great. Ooh, it's a pretty good vote. Everything's got outlines and it's a bit grey. Right, cool. Chat's still not beautiful. Uh, never mind. <laughs> um, cool, right, parity. Okay, more problems with parity. Um, there's problems... 
you can sometimes spot problems to do with parity because they involve chessboards, um, which, you know, is sometimes a giveaway. That's why I didn't want to say that this was a chessboard. Look, if I do that, then I've got a chessboard. Um, uh, I've seen problems to do with walking around on a chessboard. Um, so uh, maybe you've got a king on the chessboard, what do kings look like? Uh, uh, there's a little plus on the hats, haven't they? Uh, king in chess can move one square each turn. Um, maybe I don't want a king. <sighs> right, okay. Start again. Some other sort of chess piece. I remember midway through that like, kings don't quite work out, I think. Um, so I've seen problems like this with something like an ant walking around on a chessboard. Um, you can tell it's going to be a parity problem because it's got a chessboard in it. Um, the ant moves one square each turn and it can't move diagonally. <laughs> um, so here's an ant. It moves one square each turn, uh, wandering around the chessboard, um, and it can't move diagonally. Um, and then, because of parity, you can say lots of things. You can say things like, after, after seven steps, it has not returned to where it started. Okay, maybe that's a bit tame, uh, but that's another example of something with parity. Um, I think maybe that one is more obvious than the uh, tiling with dominoes fact. Um, it's more closely linked to odd and even numbers, right? Uh, it's got this seven steps in there. Seven's odd. Uh, each time it does a step, it moves from a white square to a blue square or from a blue square to a white square. Um, so after seven, seven steps, seven's odd, so it'll have moved uh, blue, white, blue, white, blue, white, blue, and it can't have got back to the white square that it started on. Um, so it's sort of tame level of parity. Um, I've seen other problems like this to do with um, uh, knights moving around because I think knights do a similar thing, right? Uh, there is no chance I can draw a knight. Uh, right, there we go. Knights move. Uh, they move two squares up and one square left or right. Uh, so I think they also change colour of square. It's embarrassing, right? Because anybody who's good at chess probably already knows this. And, immediately obvious that I'm not a chess player. Yeah, thank you. Okay, knight moves also take you to a, a square that's a different colour, so there's some sort of parity stuff going on in there. It probably matters to chess players. I mean, they've got those bishops that move diagonally and stay on their own colours, so uh, maybe this sort of thing matters a little bit there. Um, I also want, while we're talking about parity, I wanted to show you a, an example of a more abstract uh, parity problem uh, to do with my egg box um, works like this. Um, so I've got an egg box with six slots in it. I think I've talked about this on the live stream before, so sorry if you've heard me talk about this before. Um, it's got six slots for eggs in it. It's a six by one egg box, which is unconventional, but there's no reason why you couldn't do that. Just because six is not prime. Anyway, never mind. Um, and I've got three eggs. So there are six choose three which is six times four times, six times five times four divided by six is 20 possible positions of where I could put them. I could put the eggs here, here, and here, or, you know, any other combination of, of three positions for where to put the eggs. Um, to demonstrate that there are 20 possibilities of uh, where, to put the, uh, where to put the eggs, I'd like to take photos of them. My plan for this is to take a photo and then move one egg, one space along. So no jumping over eggs, no, no, no moving them more than one square. I'm going to be very gentle. I'm going to move the egg one space along. Um, so if my eggs were like this, then I, I'm only allowed to move this one on the end. Uh, move it along by one space. I'll take another photo. And I'm going to keep doing that and try to get to all 20 all 20 positions. Um, so this is a little bit like a maze or like a, a puzzle uh, where you move things around and you're trying to get through all of the possible um, positions. Uh, it's an idea called Hamiltonian cycles that I'm thinking about a little bit. Hamiltonian path for this, I suppose. Um, to go through all of the possible states of this thing, or all 20 of them. 
Um, and this one's possible. You, you can do this. Uh, just move an egg, take a photo, move an egg, take a photo. I would like to get through all 20 possible photos. I should have said this bit. 20 possible photos with no repeats. If you're allowed repeats, it's very easy. Um, right, no repeats. Uh, move an egg, take a photo, move an egg, take a photo. I'd like the 20 photos to be the 20 positions. Um, and it's possible, and you can even be systematic about it. There's a similar problem with, I think, if I take away one of the eggs uh, to do the problem with six spaces, two eggs, um, then there's a parity problem. Um, in this scenario, the eggs occupy um, squares, um, spaces, uh, two of the spaces, one, two, three, four, five, six, so I could write their coordinates for where the two eggs are. I could write down their coordinates x and y. Aha. I could write down their coordinates x and y to draw a kind of diagram of where my eggs are. Oh, goodness me, one, two. So one, two is a point in my, uh, my arrangement, my egg. So this point on my graph is supposed to be x is the first egg in space one, y is in the, the second egg in space two. And the eggs can't swap and they can't because they can't move through each other, so uh, y is always bigger than x. <laughs> I shouldn't have picked x for a problem with eggs in it. Anyway, um, so I could have 1, 2, I could be at 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, or I could be at some spaces over here. So this sort of abstract diagram of the, uh, in this case, 15 possibilities of what the uh, arrangement of the two eggs is. With the allowable moves, um, you can move one egg. Moving one egg changes the coordinate by by one. So you can move along these lines. There's a sort of grid of how you can how you can move when you uh, when you move one egg. Uh, you take a photo. You get to a different place. Uh, this version of the problem is impossible. And it's impossible by a sort of parity argument, not on the egg carton, um, which does have six spaces in, so it feels a bit parity like that. Um, it's impossible because of a parity argument on this abstract space describing the state of the egg box, um, x and y for the, the coordinates, where are the eggs? Um, because taking this um, uh, abstract diagram, the kind of graph of all the possible moves, I can colour in or circle the state's just like a chessboard. Uh, and if I do that, red and purple, there are way more red, um, way more red spaces than, than purple spaces. Uh, a question about my problem, sorry, I should have taken questions first. Um, is the photo considered the same if the eggs are on the same, just on the other side? Uh, no, I consider that different. So this, this, this photo, different from the one on the other side. I don't think it matters for what I've said about the problem. So uh, in this version of the problem with six spaces and three eggs, uh, you end up with, this to me feels like the last one that you end up with. I think that's true. You end up after your 20 moves, uh, your 19 moves, your 20th photo, I think it's with the three eggs over there. I, I think of that as different. Uh, that I need that to count as different so that my six choose three is 20. Anyway. Um, there's a really abstract argument over in, on the right hand side of the board there um, for why this problem about taking photos of eggs in an egg box, there are 15 possibilities, um, but somehow you can identify five, six, seven, eight, uh, six, seven, eight, nine of them as sort of red possibilities. I don't quite know, it's not quite important what they mean, um, uh, and six of them is purple. Sure, so this diagram, uh, three points, what number of lines? What are the lines? Oh, ah, right. Aha, yeah, okay, so there's some graph theory going on. We'll think about that. Come back to that graph theory in a moment. Um, so the diagram is the x axis is x, the y axis is y, which is not a helpful thing to say, sorry. Um, x and y refer to where the eggs are. So here's another example 2, 4 means an egg in space 2 and an egg in space 4. My mission is to take photos of all 15 of these these configurations to move through this states move through this this diagram i want a photo with the eggs in spaces one and two i want a photo with these eggs in spaces two and four and everything else 
um, all 15 of these possibilities. I'm going to move around, taking photos of the eggs each time. What a mad thing to be doing. Um, but anyway, there we go. <laughs> um, as we move around, um, I guess one of the hallmarks of the reason it feels like a parity problem is that you can reverse a move, you can go backwards, and there's something about it that's keeping track of oddness or evenness about the overall overall setting. You can't do a sequence of moves that gets back to where you started with a with an odd number of moves, like the ant on the chessboard. That's maybe the hallmark of um, parity problems. Anyway, here I've got some state space and I can colour in the things in the state space and then ah, in the state space you can't move around uh, can't move around between all of those alternating colours um, to get through all the spaces. Uh, Someone in chat said there are three points with an odd number of lines. Uh, in fact, I can see lots. There are six points, I think, down. Some down this side, some down that side. There's one over here, one over there. Um, I think you're thinking of the classic problem about trying to draw a diagram. Um, uh, you drawing all of the lines in the diagram, like the bridges of Kalisberg, which maybe we could do on a future episode. Um, here, I'm not trying to draw all of, all of the lines. I'm trying to visit all of the states. Um, so just visiting each point once. Um, so that's a different problem because instead of using all the bridges, I'm visiting all the islands in the in the language of that bridge and island problem that I think you and I are both thinking of. Um, anyway, right, cool. Different parity problems, including something weird and abstract uh, that was the solution to an eggs problem that I uh, was thinking about a couple of years ago. Right, cool. Uh, because I wanted to show you some more stuff. Um, I wanted to talk quickly about Tromino's. Um, I hope that's all right. Uh, we've got about eight minutes to go. That seems like enough time to define Tromino's. Uh, Tromino's are like dominoes, but three squares. Um, there are technically two different Tromino's. Um, there's this Tromino, uh, and there's this Tromino, um, uh, which is L-shaped. Uh, I'm just gonna think about this one for, for now. Uh, this three by one tromino. Maybe I'll call it a three by one tromino like that. Oh yes. Ah right. Okay. Someone's told me about red and purple. X plus Y is even for purple and odd for red. That's a really good point. There's some odd evenness going on in there. That's a really good point. That might give you a way of thinking about the egg problem without swapping to the abstract egg position diagram. The egg position diagram is my invention. And if you can find a way to think about the problem avoiding the egg position diagram, then let us know on the email address at the bottom of the screen. Right, cool. Um, Tromino's. Uh, extension to the chessboard problem again. I'm saying chessboard a lot. Cool. Um, here's the problem. I think people in chat uh, identified this problem twice. Um, somebody earlier said that they were thinking about other shaped rectangles to try and cover things with. Uh, somebody asked about taking one corner off from a, an odd by odd grid, which I think those are both great suggestions. Um, I'm gonna look at one of them. Um, I've got a grid here. Uh, I picked an eight by eight grid with one corner removed because that's a multiple of three. Um, and I'd like to try and cover it with three by one trominoes. I love this problem because it's sort of exactly the same. <laughs> as the original problem, uh, the original chessboard problem with both corners removed. Um, but it's quite a good test of whether you sort of internalised the lessons from the original chessboard problem um, or, ad and, or adapt them for a new situation. Let's have suggestions in chat and because we're running out of time we'll be quite uh, permissive with allowing stuff that feels a bit like what might have been a bit spoilery. Okay, um, Dirichlet's got a suggestion, uh, three colouring. Ali wants to think about the eggs as heads and tails and swapping them. So when you swap an egg, so when I move an egg, I turn a coin over. <laughs> then move an egg and I turn the coin over again. I've got to make sure, make sure that when I, the number of states where the coin, I don't know what the coin is unless, anyway. Let me know in chat. <laughs> what are we doing? Um, maybe we should use three colours for three for trominoes. It's quite a good idea. Um, my first instinct when I you know, th thought of this, so I'm, I'm quite slow. So the first thing I thought of was, oh, 
three by one dominoes, and I realised, oh, 62 is not a multiple of three, so it's impossible. Oh, I should remove one corner instead of two. Now there's 63, and now it's open, right? Now I don't know. Um, 63 squares does divide by three. <laughs> this is why I've cut off one corner. Yes, Jack. Um, dominoes. Um, another classic, says Ali. <sighs> Rats. Okay. Um, we can definitely come up with a variant uh, eventually. Yeah, so here's the problem. I, I love that someone said this. The trominoes are awkward because a single tromino, if you colour in the chessboard, um, covers two of one colour and one of the other. This is annoying um, because it, if both are allowed, then you can get away with quite a lot. Um, so if you colour it like a chessboard, there are, let's say, 31 black squares and 32 white squares. But maybe that just means maybe that just means that there's slightly more trominoes like this one than there are like this one. Um, so that you end up with more black squares than white squares. It's annoying. Um, it's not so slam dunk as the argument where with two by one dominoes, um, they were always one black square or one white square. Uh, so these ones, if you colour it like a chessboard, um, they might cover two black squares or one black square. So that's really irritating. Um, people in chat are possibly thinking about other ways to get around this. Hopefully at least someone at home is trying out by uh, trying out actually covering the thing with three by one dominoes just to check. You know, if it's possible, then you could find that. There's only uh, 21 of them to put in or something. Um, if it's possible, then well, you shut down all of these colouring in arguments by just going for it. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, right, okay. Colour alternate alternative diagonals. Every three, not two. Yeah. Oh, so what's the algebra simultaneous equations? I love it. Work out how many of each we're using. Uh, there are 21, so I guess I want 11 of one and 10 of the other to get slightly more. So I think I want 11 simultaneous equations. Great idea. Love it. Um, 11 of these and 10 of these to get up to 21, 31 black squares and. 30 white squares? It's counted. Something like that. 22 and 22 plus the 10 is 32. Good, right. But different people in chat are telling me to colour in things, colour in my diagonals like this. Um, this is not a chessboard. Um, this is something else. Um, if I colour in my chessboard like this, using three colours, um, ah, something happens. Uh, there are, if I do it like this, so using white, pink and blue squares, so this is not chess, although perhaps we can invent some sort of variant chess that makes use of this colouring in. Um, if I do it like this, then there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 white squares. And also, it turns out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 pink squares and also 21 blue squares. And the same number of each. Um, and one of the things we saw with colouring, uh, with covering uh, chessboards with dominoes earlier was that if there's the same number of, if there's the same number of each colour, then you're okay. Uh, that it turns out that you can do it. I try to urge caution at that point because it feels like you do it, um, but uh, uh, maybe uh, maybe we need to be more careful. And in fact, this is a really good example of a problem where we do need to be careful. My first reaction after colouring it in like this to make this slide, um, I thought of the colouring, I thought of this three colours thing, right, three squares, three colours. Um, quick pause, why is that a good idea? Well, whenever you put down a three by one tromino onto this grid, it will always be one pink square, one blue square, one white square. So that's pretty good. Uh, it doesn't matter which way around it is, um, it'll be one of each. And there is equal numbers of each, so it feels quite good. And once I've done that, uh, I tried again to colour it in again. Um, I think I've got another one in here. Yeah, so I've got a blank grid again and tried covering it with uh, trominoes and I still couldn't do it. Um, of course, not being able to do it doesn't mean that it's impossible. It might just mean that I'm bad at covering things with trominoes. Um, but I realised that I had a choice when I did the colouring. Like, when I did the colouring, um, I've coloured with the diagonals that way, um, but I could also colour with the diagonals going the other way. So having done the colouring like that, I could all instead colour it in that direction. If I colour it in that direction, 
Then I've got pink squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Blue squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And um, white squares, 20. I've got 22. So this is sort of crazy that the first way of colouring it made it look like it was possible because there were 21 of each. But then my second idea of how to colour it in shows that no, it's impossible. Um, impossible because um, uh, there are too many too many blue squares in this one. And still, when I put a trombone down, I'll cover one of each. Um, this has got a really good big message, I think. Um, this says that even if your colouring plan, uh, people who thought of colouring in with three colours, even if your colouring plan doesn't work, then keep trying because it might still be possible to come up with a different colouring in plan um, that proves it's impossible. Um, and proving it's impossible is brilliant because now we can stop trying to put trombones on top of it. Um, okay, we've hit six o'clock. Uh, Thank you very much for watching. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up there. Alternative problems that you could think about if you've seen everything we've done today. Um, probably think about uh, other versions of this problem. For example, the 4x4 four four that someone talked about before. 4x4 four four with one corner cover removed is possible with, with trominoes, 3x1 trominoes. So there's an example where the 4x4 version is different from the 8x8 version. Um, can you work out for n by n boards with one corner removed um, or one random square removed? Can you do them with trominoes? Uh, two random squares removed, three random squares removed, four random squares removed? Probably not at that point. Good. Uh, I think it's good news. It depends on the three colouring. The, the, the different three colourings give you different bits of information and they're appropriate for different corners. Good. Okay. Uh, some mission questions coming in, which I'm going to try and do very quickly now uh, before I go off and do a different thing. If you're on Unique and you're doing a big Oxplore thing, you've already left to go and see that. Uh, and I'll see you over there in a minute. Uh, right, Jack. Brilliant. Yes, Jack sat down, tried to do it with one square indent. Hasn't worked. Sorry, Jack. Turns out it's impossible for this 8x8 board, um, which is weird, the different colourings. Uh, admissions questions. Uh, European baccalaureate handboard is overall back grade versus the maths grade. I think we ask for both at Oxford. Let me double check. Uh, there's a wonderful page of Oxford international qualifications that I'm looking up. Uh, European baccalaureate. Uh, we don't ask for it. Oh no, we ask for an average of 85% or more with scores between 8 and 9 in subjects specified for A level equivalent, which would be maths. Um, so overall, 85%. Uh, the website I've just looked up is Oxford international qualifications. Uh, and that's got a list of all the stuff there. Cool. Uh, Matt scores, uh, if you look at the Matt's page, which is like the club page, but slash R slash M-A-T, um, there are average scores for people who took the test in previous years. Um, and I think I've missed some other admissions question stuff going on. Yeah, Flora's got, got me for that one as well. Quick look at other stuff. Uh, I'm confused. Good. This is confusing, I think. Um, confused by this because it feels possible when you colour it in like this because equal numbers and equal numbers before always worked when we had equal numbers of squares before that was always good turned out turned out that we could do it um different way of colouring in the same board different colours on the same board same sort of argument proves that oh no actually it's impossible um one way to think about that would be maybe use different colours for this colouring so then when you put down your trominoes using the original blue pink white colouring it looks like it's going to work but then using a, a green brown black colouring over here actually you can never satisfy that one so the colouring is kind of existing separately maybe if I use different colours might be more obvious what points I was making uh, cool see you at the open day if you're coming to the open day later this weekend uh, the maths on the mat is pretty similar to the maths on the pat uh, uh, the pat also has a syllabus of maths that you can look for quick look at other stuff that got flagged earlier on uh, we had a look at that one. Intuition uh, stuff from further reading. Uh, IB, no, and maybe I will type a longer answer because I said I would. Uh, it's the thing about future, the future. Right, cool. I'm going to end the live stream there. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next week for more uh, maths, maths stuff on the Oxford Online Maths Club. Um, I hope you enjoy colouring in chessboard problems, tiling, things like that. Variants of this problem, hopefully you can make up some of your own. I don't think we've answered every question. Uh, I hope you enjoy.
coming up with your own sorts of problems. Have a nice evening, have a nice weekend, and we'll see you next week for the Oxford Online Math Club. Bye.